One, two, three. Hallelujah. Clap for the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Let's all be seated in the house of the Lord. Amen. Let's go ahead and uh, pray before we get into this. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for blessing us to be here tonight. We thank you for giving us yet another opportunity to sit at your feet and to receive fresh rhema from heaven. I bind the work of the devil right now in the name of Jesus, that there be no distractions, but that your word would go forth and accomplish that which you sent it to. We thank you, Lord, and we surrender to the power of the Holy Ghost now in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Church said amen. amen. Praise God, all right. Um, look at your neighbor and say, get your Bible out. Amen. So we just keep this thing going and um, we're always going to take advantage of the opportunities God gives us as a church to press. And so that means that we're going to be here. We're going to be open. Why? Because it is necessary. We need the word. And you need the word. I need the word. The community needs the word. And so we thank God for giving us those opportunities to actually press in and get the word. Now, the thing about the word, which we always teach this over here, but you have to be intentional. And so if, you, if you're going to grow in your life, you have to be intentional. So um, that's why we continue to preach it. And we thank God for technology. We welcome everybody. I know a lot of you guys are online watching and things like that. So it just all that matters is that we get the word out and that it is received. Amen? Amen. Praise God. So I want to preach this message tonight. It's we're always preaching on faith, but I want to preach this message tonight entitled Faith Essentials. Faith Essentials. Just uh, we'll get those teachings from time to time that just help us to reflect on what's important. And so when you talk about essentials, when something is essential, it means it's absolutely necessary. I mean, there are some things about your faith that are absolutely necessary. Oh, because a lot of people, they'll say they have faith in God or they believe in God or they, you know, we meet a lot of people like that on outreach, but they don't always have the same type of faith. And it's really biblical faith. We're not talking about what we do because we're some special church. We're talking about what the Bible says. And so essential, faith essential, so the things that are absolutely necessary and indispensable. And so these are things that you must keep. I learned some of this early on in my walk with the Lord, and I thank God for that because I'm happy that I didn't get lost. I mean, I did advance, so I started out learning the Bible, and then I learned some greater things later on, but I'm just happy I didn't get caught up in you ever met those people that think they know God, but then it doesn't seem like they really do? Are y'all in here with me? They, they, say, they, they, they say they're Christians or something, but they don't like know anything about the Bible. They don't know any Bible verses. Y'all in here with me? Well, I thank God that I didn't go down that road and, and nobody that ever comes to this church or listens to me, you won't go down that road either. You're not going to be what we would call an unbelieving believer unbelieving believer. You say you believe, but where's the evidence of what you believe? Amen. And so faith essentials. And so we'll talk about uh, just a few of these. Number one, you must believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God. Amen. For us, that's obvious. But for the world, it's not. Now, why am I teaching you things like this? Because you have to go make disciples of men and women you have to fulfill the Great Commission. And so in order to do that, you must be equipped. And so sometimes we get so used to being around each other that we just think, oh, everybody knows that, and it's just common knowledge. Well, when you get out there, you start discipling people, you'll be surprised as to where people are in their thoughts. And so we have to know these essential things. That way we never back away from it. So once again, you must believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Now let's look over here at John. John 3, 16 through 20 in the NLT. I'll teach through this tonight. John 3, 16, and you, you guys know this, you know, that's like probably the first scripture I ever learned. 
for God so loved the world, you know, but I learned it in the King James, but I like the way the NLT kind of gives us some words that are easier to understand. And so he says, for God so loved the world, or excuse me, I'm quoting it in the King James, but for God loved the world so much that he gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish. Next verse. But have eternal life. Next verse. God sent his son into the world not to judge the world, but to save the world through him. There is no judgment. Now, this judgment here is condemning judgment. And so uh, we know the King James, is, you know, you're not condemned if you believe. And so this is a condemning judgment. Uh, we still have to be held accountable. We still have to give an account for our actions and things like this. But this is that condemning judgment. There is no judgment against anyone who believes in him. Amen. So that's where it all starts. I got to believe in Jesus. I can't just believe he exists because I've gone up to doors and I asked them, um, you know, do you know Jesus or do you believe in Jesus or do you have a relationship with Jesus? Well, a lot of people have said, no, yeah, we do believe in Jesus, but they don't believe he's the son of God. Mm -hmm. See, you could, a person can tell you they believe in Jesus, but then as you continue to talk to them, you find out that they're a Muslim. So they don't believe he's the son of God. So it's not just, do you believe in Jesus? Oh, great, we're on the same team. No, you got to know a little more. So there is no judgment against anyone who believes in him. But anyone who does not believe in him, we're talking about essential, things that are a must. But anyone who does not believe in him has already been judged for not believing in God's one and only son. And so it means they're already condemned. Now, they can believe and be converted, and that's the prayer. But if they die in that state, that state of not believing in the Son of God, they're condemned. There's nothing anybody can do to help them. Amen? Next verse. And the judgment is based on this fact. God's light came into the world, but people love the darkness more than the light. Stop right there. This is the real reason. People don't believe. Or they say they believe, but they don't believe like we believe. And the judgment is and, and the judgment is based on this fact. God's light came into the world, but people love the darkness more than the light, for their actions were evil. You guys know that you gotta be a cold hearted sinner to do some like real super raw wickedness in daylight. Most people do that stuff at night. Amen? Amen? And the reason is they're truly ashamed of their actions. And so they don't want to do it in the light. Well, this is why people don't want to come to God. Because God is light and light exposes the darkness. And so people, they basically, light came into the world, but they rejected that. And they love the darkness because their actions were evil. Amen. We'll talk about these actions. Next verse. All who do evil, y'all in here with me? Amen. All who do evil hate the light and refuse to go near it for fear of their, their sins will be exposed. Like to me, when I learn stuff like this, I'm trying to figure out how do these people come to this conclusion in their mind that they could just keep on sinning and live in any old kind of way and think that like God is fine with that. But this stuff is telling us that all who do evil, what is evil? Evil is anything that God doesn't approve of. And so all who do evil, meaning practice evil, you may make a mistake, but you're going to get, come on, you're going to get in line quick. Because you're not trying to live that way. All who do evil hate light and refuse to go near it. Uh, I mean, yeah, I met some people, they don't really want to go to church. Then you got those people 
Now, we're not the only church like this. There's plenty of churches, but you met those people, they don't like coming to this church. Ah, oh, come on, I can't get no amen right there. I'm, and we're not the only church like that. There's plenty of churches like that. But they'll go to church, they just don't want to go over here. Oh, because you don't want to step into that light. See, the word is going to expose things. And so the word is truth. And so when truth comes out, and when truth is coming forth nonstop, lies can't stand. And so some's going to have to back off. I'm going to have to back off the truth or the lies going to have to leave. Well, I ain't backing off the truth. So guess what? Either people come to the agreement with the truth or they don't want to come over here. And so all who do evil hate the light and refuse to go near it for fear their sins will be exposed. Uh, and now let's go to John. So remember, these are essentials. You, you got to believe that Jesus is the Son of God. There's no ifs, ands, or buts, no questions. I believe that. And John 8, 12. John 8, 12. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. See that? So we just read how light came into the world. World refused him because the world loved darkness. Jesus will light up your life. How many of y'all have had Jesus light up your life? Come on, somebody. He light up your life, man. And how many of y'all have had the light of Jesus light you up so much that you can't even listen to the same stuff you used to listen to? I, I'm, come on, man. You, you can't even. Man, the light. Of, listen, that's what I'm saying. He changes us because he's light. I am the light of the world. Light and darkness can't coexist. And so if I meet Jesus, the real true son of God, who is the light of the world, he's going to illuminate my life. And there is going to be noticeable changes, differences that just happen because. And so he says, then spake Jesus unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me, y'all in here with me, who we following? Jesus. See, that's what we're doing. We're not following no religion. We're not following no set of uh, what you call attendants of faith and people say, oh, well, we do it this way, we do it that way. No, we're just following Jesus, man. Amen. We got one king and his name is Jesus. Amen. And we just all following him. And so he says, I'm the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness. Oh, Pastor, but you know, God knows my heart. And, you know, I'm, I'm really just, I'm getting better. Ain't no getting better, man. We just reading the gospel, man. That's all I do over here. I've been just reading, like, simple Bible. I can't bring some different interpretation on this. If he says... I am the light of the world. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness. So what does that mean? If I'm following Jesus, can, can I go to the club? I mean, is that okay? Is, it, is, is, a, is there an exception for that? Well, but I can just go in the club because, you know, I just want to have a good time. No, man. Jesus came to divide. He came to divide. He, Jesus speaks of... I came to divide families. So what does that mean? There's a family loyalty that will not be able to supersede your loyalty with God. Amen. This thing is, Jesus is so demanding. He says, if you're not willing to leave your mama, your daddy, and everybody and follow me, you're not fit to follow me. Amen. Say, what? Amen. Because what that means, what he means by that is, you're going to have to leave all of your traditions, all of your false gods, all of your idol worship, all of the traditions that you've been hanging on to that have no biblical significance. You're going to have to leave them all for me. Wow. Now we see why. Not everybody wants to go to church. Not everybody's willing to sign up for this. Now, I... I'm going to tell you, it's the best decision you could ever make. Amen. Because 
this is a decision that's going to pay you now and pay you later. But when you don't choose to go all in with God, yeah, you're going to get paid now and you're going to get paid later. And so what happens is you see people's lives falling apart, but they don't know it. And then they're falling apart, crumbling, and then one day they wake up in hell. What a waste. And this is why Jesus came with such an urgent message. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This also means if I'm following Jesus, I shall not be blind. Amen. So this is a, a greater meaning to this. So we don't walk in or follow after darkness, but there's the double meaning of it is we're not blind. And so we're not going to be deceived. And so we're not going to walk around when you study it out. It starts to spell it out to help us understand we don't walk around aimlessly. Like I don't know what to do. Oh, I know what to do because I'm following Jesus. I know what to do because I have the light of life. You know, the light of life can light up any situation. Amen. He'll just bring an illumination. Have you ever been there in your life where, man, you just didn't know what to do and you couldn't figure it out and then all of a sudden it, bam, came to you. Some solution came. The, we, we would say, man, the light bulb turned on. Well, this is what Jesus is doing all the time. And so if we stay with him, then we're not walking in dark places, but we're also not in the dark aimlessly, not knowing what to do. Amen? Amen. All right, let's go over here to John 14, 6. So these are essentials. These, these are really deal, deal breakers. If a person doesn't come into agreement with you on these things that we're talking about tonight, you know y'all not going to the same place. That is what it is. Jesus says unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. So that right there is a dividing line amongst religions. People don't know what to do with Jesus. And Jesus does not sugarcoat anything. He lets you know what he's about. He lets you know who he is. Jesus never says anything about, well, you can believe in me and you could also believe in him. No, no, no. You're going to believe in me. I am the only way. And that is really what we do as Christians. We come to that place where we say, there's no other way. Amen. I've met a lot of people, they, they call themselves conscious or, you know, they got some, or they, now they say spiritual. They're spiritual. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, that spiritual stuff is going to get you to hell. <laughs> because you can't just be spiritual, you need to believe in Jesus. Amen. That is it. And so, we stand on this. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. We're talking about these essentials. I'll give you another one. Number two is you must believe the Bible is the word of God. Man, this is simple. Yeah, I know it's simple for you guys. You guys are used to hearing this. But you'd be surprised how many Christians, they don't know the Bible. Wait, what? Like, you don't know anything about the Bible? Well, I think I went to Sunday school when I was a kid. These are essentials, man. This is like stuff that you must do. Absolutely necessary. One, you must believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Amen. Two, you must believe the Bible is the Word of God. Look at your name and say, I believe in the Bible. Okay. Now, if you, if you were to do a survey and ask people, do you believe in the Bible? A lot of them, they may say, yeah. And then you can ask them, well, that's great. What's your favorite scripture? 
They say, oh, now lay me down to sleep or something like that. But you, how are you going to believe in something you don't know? You, you don't know anything of what it says, so, but you say you believe it. Well, as Christians, this is essential for us. We must, we must believe the Bible is the Word of God. Now, if I know it's the Word of God, I will put a priority on it. If I think it's a historical document or it's just some whatever, then I won't place a dependence on it. Amen? To where, you know, we've heard the Bible being referenced as living, living water. Well, if you depend on it, then now you'll go to it. But you must see it that way. And so now let's go to 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy, we'll look at 3. 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17, we'll look at it in the Amplified Classic. So it says, every scripture is what? What does that mean? God breathed. See, that means it came from God through man. And so man was just the vessel. So it's not like somebody could say, oh no, see, that's Timothy's word that you read. No, it's the word of God. It may have been penned by God. Timothy or Paul or whatever, but it was breathed into him from God. Now we have to see that. That way, you, have you guys ever uh, experienced any uh, supernatural significance to this Bible? To where, what do I mean by that? I mean like you've had some things where, you, man, you were going through something and, and you needed to get through something and, and God got you through it with some scripture. But how does that scripture apply to your situation? Because that scripture was written over 2,000 years ago. But how could it help you in your current situation? It's rhema. It's supernatural. It's God's word. See? Just like it's, it's, it's never going to be outdated. It's always applicable. Now we have the Holy Spirit, and but see now us as Christians, we got to depend on this. So you start out, I believe in Jesus. Ain't no other way but Jesus. Then now you establish the fact that I believe in this Bible. Well, I'm going to have to learn it. I'm going to see what's going on so that I can grow by it. And so he says, every scripture is God-breathed, given by his inspiration, and profitable for instruction. I'm telling you, this, this right here changed my life. Me learning the Bible and submitting my life to the Bible changed everything for me. People learn songs, they learn stuff, they learn how to become better people, but until they learn the book, they won't be able to have any lasting victory. Every scripture is God-breathed, given by his inspiration, and profitable for instruction, for reproof and conviction of sin. Y'all in here with me? I tell you what, people that are habitually sinning are not in their word. I, they're not in their word. And if they are, they're led by a demon that's trying to get them to go to some scriptures that are not, you know, they're taking things out of context. So people that are habitually sinning, they can't be in the Word because the Word's going to bring conviction. Amen. I don't have to judge you. You know, we don't have to, we don't have to judge anybody. Say, man, you're just terrible. <coughs> Excuse me. All we got to do is read the Word and encourage people to get in the Word, get in the book. Because when you get in the book, then now... You don't need somebody to come over and tell you what's wrong. There are people that, you know, there are people that really don't like other people telling them what to do. Y'all met them? Maybe, maybe could be you, huh? Yeah. I'm just saying, you say, yeah, I met them. I know them quite well. I, I see them every morning when I get up and look in the mirror. But, it's different when God tells you. 
Because I was one of those people. I didn't like nobody telling me what to do. But when God started telling me, I was like, oh. <laughs> well, um, okay. I wasn't trying to argue with him. Well, if we encourage people, get in the Bible. Guess what that Bible's going to do? That Bible will convict you of your sin. If you got some area in your life that's wrong before God, get in it, read. Don't, don't be just running around, all these people, they're judging me, and that's why I don't go to church, because I don't, I don't go to church because Christians are hypocrites and all this stuff. And Just read your Bible. And the next thing you know, the Holy Spirit will convict you of sin. This Bible is good for correction of error. There is no faster correction in the book. Boy, I've, I've had some wrong ways of thinking, and boy, I must have got corrected so quick by reading the Word. And there, nothing works like this. I mean, this, this, this will break down the most prideful person. But we got to be willing to go to it. So it's good for correction of error and discipline in obedience. See that? How do I know how to be obedient? I got to be in the Bible. I got, I got to get in the Word. Because when you are in the Word, the Word puts pressure on disobedience. Amen. That's where that conviction comes in. But you will find that people that are habitually disobedient, mm -hmm. they don't get into this. You say, well, let's do a Bible study. They say, oh, well, when? Oh, yeah, I'm busy on that day. Yeah, I'm busy on that day. They're going to have an excuse. Because they're, like we saw in John earlier, they don't want that light because their deeds will be exposed. Okay, so, uh, and then look at this. This is what the Bible, all this stuff is what the Bible will do for you. And it's good for training in righteousness. See, I can't just say that I'm going to be righteous. I got to be trained. I, I, I got to be trained. That's like you saying whatever profession you may have, and you're just going to say, that's what I am. And you say, I'm a, you know, this is, I'm a professional at this, and I'm a level whatever. And you say, okay, well, where'd you get your training? You said training? Oh. No, I, I just decided this is what I'm going to do. Well, we can't just decide we're going to be the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. We're going to wake up and that's what we're going to say. I got to get in the book. Because otherwise, how do I know what's righteous? And so I must get in this book because it's good for training in righteousness, in holy living, in conformity to God's will in thought. Y'all see all this? All I'm talking about is the Bible. This is all the stuff the Bible will do for you. It'll conform you to God's will in thought, purpose, and action. Man, all of that stuff. Why? Because I'm in this word. And this word is changing me. It's transforming me. I won't be allowed to look for loopholes in life, I will have to come to this place of truth to where I submit my life to it. And so I will conform to God's will. Uh, is that it? Oh, okay, look, verse 17, look at this. So here's the purpose. So that a man of God, and that includes a woman, may be complete and proficient, well-fitted, and thoroughly equipped for every good work. Amen. Now, what if I take the Bible out? then that means I'm not ready. That means I'm not equipped. So if I don't learn the word, I'm not prepared to succeed. So you see how important it is for us to teach it, but then encourage you to go further, to read every day. Everything we do, you know, this is a word church. We're all, everything's Bible. We got Bible coming from everywhere. 
Well, that's how we live. Without that, we have no chance. And so uh, let's look at another one. Uh, Psalm 119, 160. Psalm 119, 160. Thy word is true from the beginning. See that? When I first started out on this journey, God told me to read. He said, I said, okay, if this is your word and it's true, you're going to have to explain it to me. Because I don't even understand all this. And at the time, all I had was a King James Bible. That's what my sister gave me. And God told me, now read it. I start trying to read it, then I try to get out of it. So I just said, I can't, I don't understand this. Then I start trying to skip. Y'all in here with me. Start trying to skip some chapters, you know what I mean, get to, and God. Now, I didn't even know the word yet, but God spoke to me, and I didn't even know that this is a scripture, line upon line, precept upon precept. I didn't know that was a scripture, but God spoke that to me. And he said, line upon line, precept upon precept. So he didn't allow me to skip anything. So I read, it must have took me, man, about a year and a half because I read it and he didn't let me read fast. You know, you read fast, you know, some, some of that stuff you read fast because you're just trying to hurry up and get over it. Come on, how many of y'all ever like looked at a chapter and then before you started reading, you said, well, how, how many pages is this? Real quick? Let me see. Let me see how many pages is this before I start this. Let me look at he didn't let me do that. And so I had to just go slow. And he had me get a highlighter. I didn't know anything about studying your Bible. I didn't know about highlighters and all that. I didn't learn that in no class. God just told me to do it. And so I was highlighting stuff. And I went all the way through the whole Bible. Well, he says, thy word is true from the beginning. And every one of thy righteous judgments endures forever. And so this thing is going to stand. You know, this Bible is going to work in every generation. Amen. There's going to be a lot of changes, a lot of technology, a lot of stuff like that. But the Bible is still going to work. Amen. It worked back then and it's still working now. And this is something that we just must simply believe. Let's look at another one. Psalm 119. Let's look at verse 9. Amplify classic. I encourage you. You know, teach your kids the Bible. Those, maybe you're, you're listening to me, but teach them. You know, I, I, me and my wife, we taught our kids the Bible. We taught them Bible verses. We gave them memory verses. We, we you know, quizzed them on it, made sure that they knew scriptures because that's building blocks for life. And if they have that foundation, now it's going to impact generations to come. They'll be able to teach it to their kids. And so this here says, Psalm 119, verse 9, it says uh, in Amplified Classic, how shall a young man cleanse his way? And so that means, how's he going to purify himself? You know, somebody messes up, right? How many of y'all been there where you messed up and you're like, man, dang. But then you wanted, you wanted to do right, but then you had to know how to do right. Anybody in here? It's like, I, man, I want to do the right thing, but something has to change. Because if not, you're going to keep doing the same thing. Right. You say, man, I don't want to do this no more, but then you do it again. So what happens is old habits get replaced by new ones. Amen. And you start practicing something else. Well, how shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed and keeping watch on himself. You guys hear me say stuff like you are your own best accountability partner because you can lie to a lot of people. You can pull the wool over their eyes and make them think whatever, but you know what you're doing. Well, if you are keeping watch on yourself, look at your name and say, I'm watching out for me. Really? Like, yeah, man, you got to be like, uh, I'm not letting myself slide. I'm not trying to get away with nothing. Because I'm going to be the one that's going to expose me. Amen. Amen. See, that's how God wants us living. And so you could tell this to someone. How can a young man, this doesn't mean you have to be young, but anybody, 
new in the Lord. How can you cleanse your way? How can you start afresh, start anew? By taking heed and keeping watch on himself, but not just according to what you think. So some people, they justify their behavior. They feel it's okay for them to be a certain way. Y'all in here with me? Amen. Well, it's not that bad. You know, I'm not, I mean, I'm not really bothering nobody. And, and this. Well, you don't want to be the one determining what's good or bad. You want the Bible to tell you. Amen. Because you could think that something is good, but you get to reading that Bible and it'll tell you where you're wrong. See, a lot of people, they make excuses. A lot of Christians are in this, they're stuck in this trap. They want to be able to drink and they want to, you know, I'm just having a little wine and this stuff like that because they know that one scripture where in Ephesians chapter, uh, I think it's six or five, maybe five, six, somewhere there, be not drunk with wine wherein it is excess. See? And after all, Jesus drank wine, so I can do it. But they don't pay attention to the other stuff where it talks about don't cause someone to stumble. They don't talk about, you know, they don't understand, and so they don't understand the, the value of their witness. Amen. Amen. They don't understand that they must protect their witness, right. and, and they must live in a way that others can follow. So somebody, what if a person found out well, you know, I was just doing my little sipping on my wine, and then this one person saw me doing it, but they had a problem with it. And so they saw me doing it. They tried to do it like me, but they messed around and had a relapse. Now, is it worth it? Was well, it worth you going to the winery to call somebody to have a relapse? You see what I'm saying? That's the, and the Holy Ghost is the one that's going to help you with that. That's why we... Uh, speak about a higher standard. So everybody's grown. They can make their decisions, but let your decisions be those that are pleasing to God. And I'm telling you, when you get in this Bible, he's going to tell you, I don't want you doing these things because you're tainting my witness. Amen. I don't want anybody to have a question when it comes to you and me. That's right. Amen. And so that's why we don't, you know, I don't approve of all this Christian still trying to drink and all that. Just let that be over there and you be you. Follow Jesus. He'll give you enough fulfillment to where you won't need those things. And your witness will never be tainted because you never know when he'll call on you to lead somebody to him. Now, let me ask you, would you want to lead him, lead this man to Jesus while you're under the influence? Or would you rather be like, Sharp in the spirit. I, I don't know about you, but I want to be sharp. I don't want to be like a little, just, you know, I'm just a little relaxed. You know, just, you know, just had a couple. I'm just a little relaxed. And then he says, lead them to me. Whew, okay. But when you're sharp, you don't have anything to worry about. Amen? Amen? All right. Now, how can a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed and keeping watch on himself according to your word. And so act according to his word. And look, conforming his life to it. So I'm going to conform my life to the word. I'm not going to try to get the word to fit my life. I'm going to let my life be changed by the word. Amen? And so these are essential things. So we're believing that the Bible is the word of God. And we recognize its importance. Now let's go to another one. 2 Timothy 2.15. So what does it say here? Study. So we have that responsibility as Christians, right? Study to show thyself approved unto God. This helped me in my early days of being a Christian. Because I obeyed God and I read through that Bible without skipping through and stuff like that, I didn't get my Bible lessons from some great place. I read it myself. 
Well, because I did that, I had a confidence in it. And so I would encounter people and they would try to tell me that the Bible says something that it didn't. And I said, oh, that's what it says? Hey, let's, uh, let's look at it right now. Oh, no, we don't want to look at it right now, but we want to invite you over to this gathering. See, they want to get you around some other people. But when you study it yourself, you'll say, come on, brother, let's sit down, let's, let's engage. I, got, I told one, one man, I said, I got my Bible in the car. Let's, let's get into it right now. Oh, no. But if you study yourself, then now you will be one that is informed. You see why this is essential? Because somebody could tell you that this Bible says something that it does not say. Amen. And they can have you following something that is wrong. But if you study for yourself, I want to know what it says myself. So he says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So they twist it. You listen to people. You can watch some people sometimes. And they'll twist that word up a little bit. <coughs> Excuse me. They'll twist it a little bit. But if you know it yourself, have you guys ever been hearing somebody preach a sermon or something? Maybe just me. I've heard that. And I said, wait, wait, hold on. I say, wait, what? Me and my wife have been places and we're, we're listening. We're supposed to, like at a conference or something. We're sitting down and everything is good. And then we hear some. And what's awesome is we're always on the same page. And so as soon as we hear something, we look at e we're looking at each other. What do you say? Wait, wait, hold on. And for me, I don't know how to fake it. That'll mess the whole thing up for me. I'm done. I, when that person does that, I'm like, I, I'm checking out because now it's contaminated. And I have heard people come up with some stuff that came from their own personal intellectualism, but not the scriptures. And they tried to say that the scripture was saying something that it didn't say. And that threw me off. But I, it only threw me off because I had been studying. See, if you study yourself, you'll never be deceived. Amen. You'll never worry about nobody's going to lead you off into some stuff. You, if you study yourself, so you come to this church then it's going to be a confirmation in your spirit that what I'm preaching is right. If you've been studying and I'm trying to come up with some false doctrine, guess what? You're going to know. And you're going to say, oh, no, I'm not following that. Amen? Yeah. But there's a lot of people, man, I didn't, they come up with gimmicks, they come up with all kinds of stuff, and what's crazy is that there are people following them. Like, why would you follow someone that's not teaching the truth? Because you're not reading it yourself. And we're talking about what's essential. I'm not telling you guys something tonight that's optional. This is essential if you're going to stay saved. If you're going to make it to the end, you're going to have to do this stuff. You're going to have to believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. You're going to have to believe that the, uh, the Bible is the Word of God. And by believing that, you're going to have to get into it. You're going to have to study it and so that you don't get duped. So you won't be ashamed. Amen. You'll be able to stand on the Word, stand on it for yourself. And the third thing we'll touch on tonight in terms of essentials, it's probably, you know, a lot more, but so one, I said, you must believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. We all believe that. But we got to be able to express it to others. And we got to be able to stand on it in such a way. Because listen, we're not just out here to just try to get people to say a quick prayer. That's not what Jesus said. He said, go make disciples. Amen. And so that means I got to help them do what I do. Amen. Well, I got to know what I'm doing if I'm going to be able to help somebody else do it. I can't just... 
give somebody a drive by. You, you want to get Jesus before you die or whatever? And then they say, yeah, I believe. And then I just, that's all I did. I got to have some foundation. I got to be able to really teach them. And so we got to believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God. We must believe that the Bible is the word of God. So we got to be able to stand on this. If somebody tells me, oh, I don't believe in that book. Ain't nothing I can do to help you, man. This is all I got. I don't have no other side teachings. This is all I got. Well, I don't believe in that. All I can do is pray for you. That maybe God would open up your heart to receive. But I can't do anything. That's why you don't argue with people and disputing about the Bible and stuff. Just believe it yourself. And stand on that belief. And then the third thing is, and this is a hard one, but it's hard for people to understand, but I'm just going to give you what the word says. That way, you know, I get all these people talking about, ugh, works don't matter, and this and that, and blah, 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 whatever. I don't get into that. I just read the Bible. I'm one of them simple people. It's like, Lord, is that what it says? He says, yes. Okay, that's fine. I take it. I don't have to go get somebody else. Well, do you guys, what do you think the Lord really meant when he said this? Because I'm trying to get some different opinions. You know, people have forums and stuff. I'm just going to get this scholar, this person over here. What do you think God meant? by? How about you just ask God yourself? I mean, you got the Holy Ghost. Why don't you just ask him, Lord, what do you mean by this? You said this. What do you mean by this? And that'll keep you locked in. And so the third thing is your faith must have corresponding action. I'm always saying this, but I'm going to say it again tonight. So you can't say you have faith, but nobody knows but you. Ain't no evidence nowhere in your life. You got some type of faith that you didn't came up with. Amen. Amen. Oh, no, I believe. I remember I, I was a sinner and I, you know, I said, I thought I had some, I want to call it faith, because I said, uh, I prayed over my meal before I ate. And all I was praying was some, some memorized prayer that I learned going to the Catholic church. But I didn't have no faith. But let, I would, let, you know, let me tell it. I said, oh, yeah, I, I, I believe in God. I'm, yeah. And I used to be like, I got my own relationship with God. Your own relationship with God is really a relationship with the devil. Amen. That's it. Because he's going to deceive you into thinking that you can have a relationship that's outside of the word. So I must submit and have a relationship according to this book. And so your faith must have corresponding action. Go to James. Read through a couple of verses and then we're going to close. Let's see, we're doing good on our time. Yeah. So James 2, 14 through 20, NLT. It says, what good is it, dear brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith, but don't show it by your actions? Is this, is this the Bible? Or what, what is this saying? People say that your works don't matter, but what about this? What good is it, dear brothers, and sisters, if you say you have faith, but don't show it by your actions, can that kind of faith save anyone? See? Because it's not genuine. Jesus even says, if you love me, keep my commandments. So a lot of people say they love God, but their actions don't show that there's a genuine love for God. Next verse. Suppose you see a brother or a sister who has no food or clothing. And you say goodbye and have a good day, stay warm and eat well. But then you don't give that person any food or clothing. What good does that do? What a great analogy, huh? Like you're going to walk up to somebody and say, you know, be warm, be filled. But you didn't give them what they are lacking. And so that's the example we have. People that say they love God, they have faith, but their actions don't show it. That's the same as walking by and not 
meeting a need and telling somebody to be blessed. Amen. No, you really want to help them, you would meet that need. And so he says, so you see, faith by itself isn't enough. People use faith loosely. They use the word faith loosely. But faith by itself isn't enough unless it produces... Y'all in here seeing this tonight? You see why we're this type of church? Where we, we, we believe in holding people accountable? Why? Well, I mean, it just... The Bible says it. We just follow. That's all we're doing. Just follow, you know. Now, what would I look like as your pastor? And I'm just, I'm not holding you accountable to anything. Amen. What are we doing? Just having us a little friend group? A, a club or something? We've got to act according to the book. So you see, faith by itself isn't enough unless it produces good deeds. It is dead and useless. Next verse. Now someone may argue, some people have faith, others have good deeds. But I say, how can you show me your faith if you don't have good deeds? I will show you my faith. Come on, y'all. By my good deeds. I'm going to show you who I believe in by the way I live my life. I'm going to show you what my convictions are by the way I live my life. Next verse. You, you say you have faith for you believe that there is one God. What does that say? Good for you. Even demons believe this. And they tremble in terror. Man. This is, this is just simple truth. I mean, we got to show this, man. That's why I said we got to go 100. We got to go all in because if we don't go, go all in, it ain't going to count. Amen. A lot of people going to get it. Why do you think Jesus said many going to say in that day, Lord, Lord, haven't we done all this stuff? And he's going to say, depart from me. I never knew you. Amen. That's all these people that are playing religious games but not living this thing out for real. Amen. Next verse. How foolish. Can't you see that faith without good deeds is useless? So we've got to have works that are in agreement with the faith that we say we have. Y'all in here with me? Amen. If I say I believe the Bible, then I'm going to live according to it. I can't say I believe it, but then I'm doing something else. If I'm doing something else, then maybe I believe in something else. But if this is what I believe in, then let me stick to it. And we don't have, we really don't have time to be compromising and doing all these things. But how many of y'all have decided that this is what you believe, this is the life you're going to live, and that just is what it is? You, you, you settled. How many of y'all, you, you, you have decided that you don't really care if your family don't agree or all these people don't agree, you have decided that this is what you're going to do. Amen. And God approves of that decision and he will give you all the power you need to make it through every single day. Amen. You don't ever have to worry about, well, what if I can't do it? God is going to do it through you. Amen. And all he needs from you is a willing heart. Make yourself available. Lay yourself out before God and let him have full control and watch how your faith is put on display and you will be a soul winner because people will be attracted. What people are attracted to is genuineness. Our world is in desperate need of authenticity. Amen. So many fake people going around. That's why you got social media, you got all these people putting up stuff. Whoop, that's the wrong angle. Let me get a better angle. You got all the perfect angles, all the perfect clips and takes and cuts and everything, and people are not genuinely living a good life. But those of us that are sold out for God, those of us that have decided, I'm following this. I don't care what everybody does. 
you need to be able to draw the line in the sand. You need to be able to say, this is it for me. I got nothing else to do. All I got is this. And if I can't build it according to this, I don't need it in my life. Amen. 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 Y'all believe that? Amen. Come on. Go ahead and give the Lord a hand clap. Amen. <laughs> Let's close out this message tonight with some prayer. God. Amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for meeting us here, giving us a chance to get a hold of this truth. We know that it's simple and we know that it's, it's crucial, though, and, and we've all submitted our lives to it. And we can all make it and continue to win and help others win. Maybe you're watching this right now and you don't know Jesus as Lord. We want you to know all you got to do is open your heart. He'll come in. He'll take over. But you must be the one that is willing to surrender. Church, let's repeat this prayer so that anyone who hears this message will know how to receive Jesus as Lord. Repeat after me. Jesus. Please forgive me for all of my sins. I commit my life into your hands. This day, I am saved. Do with me as you please. And fill me with the power of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, amen. Clap for the Lord. Amen.